Amen. Good evening, Glory Church. And we want to welcome those who are listening to us online. We're so happy that you joined us tonight. We're going to start or continue with the fight of faith. This is part two. You may be seated. And we're going to call this message a fighting spirit. How many know in these last days, we need to fight like never before? You know, in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said that we're actually the disciples asked Jesus, what are the signs of your coming and the end of this age? Jesus said perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves. They will be boastful. They will be, they be full of pride. He said, now one sign of my coming is this. He said there will be wars and rumors of wars. We've heard rumors of wars, Russia some out attacking Taiwan and rumors of wars. He say there'll be all kind of, he said there'll be earthquakes and diver places. He say, but the end is not yet. He even said there'll be pestilence. So we rebuke this, what they are calling the next wave. We bind that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we know things are going to happen. Isn't that right? But no plague or calamity shall come near our dwelling. Say amen. amen. Say, by his stripes I'm healed. Stripes, I'm healed. In Jesus' name. No plague or calamity shall come near my dwelling. Amen. How many know you got to fight for your health? You got to fight for your sanity. You got to fight to walk in peace. Amen. You have to fight to stay delivered. If God has ever delivered you from any kind of stronghold, how many know the devil likes to visit and bind you back up? How many, how many know you got to fight to walk in, in liberty and freedom? Um, 1 Timothy 6, 11 says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life wherein I have called you. Um, I don't know what you're going through, but you know what? Galatians 6, 9 says this, and let us not be weary and well doing. Don't get tired of doing what God told you to do because you don't have instant results. I can't hear you. For in due season, if you keep doing what God told you to do, like we're doing this grill to glory, we're going to keep doing what God told us to do. We're not going to get tired of doing what God told us to do. Amen. And I'll remind you again, God, Pastor Dave thought, oh, he was thinking failure. And God say, no, that was a success because you did what I told you to do. Today we had a uh, pastor's conference at another church um, regarding grill to glory. And, you know, um, I mean, I mean, I felt like I went to church today. I had church today, y'all. I mean, I left charged. I left energized. I left full of faith, full of hope. Oh, I mean, it was so incredible. Anyway, afterwards, they opened it up for testimonies from pastors. And this one pastor got up, and um, he said, um, you know, um, the, he said, I was the assistant pastor. And, um, and the head pastor went home to be with the Lord. He died. He went home to be with the Lord. And I was installed as lead pastor, he said. And the church was already going downhill. And um, he said after he passed, he said almost everybody left. He said I would sit up there like doing praise and worship. He said I would sit up there and I'm looking and there was nobody there, practically hardly nobody. And he said, I just sat there most of the time with my head down until it was time for him to preach. And he said he eventually heard about Grilled or Glory. And he said he just fell in press, you know, to hook up with it, to sign up. And he said, I started doing it, and I started doing it, and nothing happened. And he said, and nothing happened. He said, I kept on doing it, and nothing happened, and, no, and it seemed like I wasn't reaching anybody. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, one Sunday, he says, like they all came in at one time. And he said, they have never stopped coming since. He said, I am not sitting up in the pulpit with my head hung down no more. So, and that fit right in with my message. 
You need to not grow weary. Don't get tired of doing what God told you to do because you don't see instant results. I survived the faith movement. This ain't working. Where's your faith? You need a fighting spirit. Just like I told you when God told me that was my house, I had to fight for it. And actually, be honest with you, I almost gave up. I did. I'm like, God, you said it was my house. Forget it. Every, it's like everything just started falling apart. Pastor Dave said this to me. He said, Pam, now you know God said that our, that was our house. And he told you specifically that he gave you peace that that was our house. He said, now, I can fight and do this by myself, but we can get it done twice as fast if you hook up, hook your train up to mine, and, and let's get this done. And when he said it, I went, that's exactly right. We pulled that off, didn't we, baby? Didn't we? We pulled that off. Did you hear me? Here is the key to your fight. You know that you know that God said it was yours. Then you have faith for the fight. But if you're wavering back and forth, well, I don't know if it's God. That means the devil can come right in, uh, send a few distractions, distract you, and you will never get what God said that you can have. Now, like this land, I know that I know that I know. I can't listen to nobody or the devil but God. God gave me Jeremiah 6, 16. He says, stand in the way and see and ask for the old path. Wherein is the good way? And you will find, and he said, and walk therein, and you will find rest for your souls. I am, I am not a quitter. See, if I quit, then it'd be easy to quit the next time. But if I win, it'll be easier to win the next time. Winning prepares you for the next battle so that you can win that too. When you win, when you win, you got some experience under your belt. Wait a minute, because experience brings hope, and hope makes not a shame. We will not, glory church, be put to shame. I'm not quitting. Amen. I'm telling you, and this preacher, when he got through, he had, um, he had everybody on their feet. He said, my head is not hung down anymore. He said, I kept doing what I felt like I, God told me to do, and I kept doing it, and I kept doing it. He said, one Sunday. That reminds us when we first started the ministry, we were at the motel, and uh, we were talking, and we were going, well, don't nobody come on Wednesday. We might as well shut this down, folks. We were getting ready to start what we thought was our last midweek service. We shut the double doors to the conference room we were in. Folks, I am not exaggerating. People, uh, they came all at one time in groups. I'm not talking about no three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not talking about no 10 people. I'm not talking about no 15 people. I, we, it, it was amazing. We were getting, he was getting ready to start praise and worship, and the doors flew open like that. And we looked, a crowd of people, and they all came in at one time. Couldn't nobody do that but God. Amen. Say, God, give me a fighting spirit. And let me tell you something. If God called you to this ministry, he called you to fight with us. I got one lonely hand clap. Wow. Okay, I got two. I ain't going to get no more. All right. Praise the Lord. That's all right. Me and we got this. And God's got us. I say God got us. You know, there is reward in obedience. I can't hear you. You got to stir yourself up. Say, I got to stir my stuff up. Now, you've heard of Muhammad Ali. They call Muhammad Ali. Let me see if I can get here. They call Muhammad Ali the world's greatest, greatest, the people's champion. Before he got in the ring, he, he'd be shadow boxing, and he'd be talking to himself. What did he say, y'all? I float like a butterfly. I sting like a bee. Your hands can't hit what your eyes can't see. What was he doing? He was stirring up his confidence. I can't hear you. You got to stir up your confidence. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. I'm going to keep doing what God told me to do. 
You know what? You got to do it if you got to do it by yourself. Evander Holyfield, the real deal. He was no joke. Did you hear me? He had a warrior's mentality. Every time he set foot in the ring, he had this mentality, oh, no, I'm fighting to win. You have to fight to win. Say, I'm fighting to win. He fought like everything depended on him, but he believed like everything depended on God. We're fighting right now like everything depends on us. But we're believing like everything depends on God. While we're fighting, we're believing. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by what I believe. Say amen. First Timothy 6.12. It says, fight. Uh-oh, got to preach right there. What are we supposed to do? Wait a minute. Lay down, roll over, and play dead. Come on, Erica. Fight. fight. Everybody go fight. fight. Come on, louder. Fight. Like you had breakfast. Fight. Like you ate lunch. Fight. Like you ate dinner. Fight. Say fight three times. Fight. 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 What are we supposed to do? Fight. And then Paul tells us what kind of fight it is. It's a good fight. So a good fight is one that you win. He said fight the good fight of faith. Long as you don't give up, cave in, and quit, you're going to win. Lay hold on eternal life. You got to get a grip, a grab, a hold on this thing. Woo! You got to get a pit bull anointing. And I, I hear if they, if they clamp their jaws on you, it's over. Uh, you hear me? Uh, my brother was telling me about a story, not too long ago, about a story that I don't know if he read it or saw it on the news. He said this pit bull, not sad, but I'm, I'm giving it as an example. This pit bull attacked this man, and they, they tried their best to pry uh, that dog's jaws off of that man, but that dog had a grip. That dog had a hold. They couldn't do it. And the, the sad story is the man... He passed, and, uh, well, what they had to do, they had to take the dog down. And they said when they took the dog down, he still had a grip, a hold on that, on that man's face is what he had. You get it? So spiritually speaking, that's bad in the natural. But spiritually speaking, you got to be tenacious. You got to get a grip a grab, and a hold on what God told you to do. And don't get tired. Don't get weary. Because you will reap if you faint not. You know what? The promises of God must be possessed. They're not going to always fall in our lap like ri uh, ripe cherries from a tree. When we were little, my granny had a uh, a more than one. Boy, I never seen that many cherry trees in my life. Boy, I mean, we ate good then. We were healthy back then. She had a grapevine. I didn't like the grapes. They didn't taste like the grapes that we eat in the store. But anyway, we ate them anyway, and we messed around and spit them out, but whatever. I mean, she had uh, persimmons. Anybody know what a persimmon is? Lord have mercy. Yeah, she had all of, anything that you can grow in, the, in, this, in this area, this region, she grew it, you know. But those cherries, oh, my God, to my harvest time. It seemed like one day you look at them, they're green. The next day they're red, and you can't touch them. Next thing I know, they're all on the ground. You should have seen them. We devoured them. They were awesome. Yeah. Anyway, the promises of God are not going to fall in your lap just like that. Some things you have to take by force. The kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it. But you know what? If you work hard right now and do what God told you to do, there is going to come a time where you can rest. Did you hear me? When David, after David killed Goliath, he, 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 <laughs> he took the head, dragged it around a little bit. And I want you to know the Bible says that David took uh, uh, Goliath's armor. He took his head. He took, the, he, he took that spirit he killed him with, and he put it in his tent. Did you hear me? I say, did you hear me? Absolutely. 
The first three words says fight. The devil wants you to lay down and roll over and play dead. Say, I'm not doing it. Say, I've been called to fight. The second thing you need to know, a good fight is one that you win. That's what Paul the Apostle said this. He said, my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. He said, I kept the faith, and now it's laid up for me, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord has promised me on that day. You know, the Bible says the just shall live by what? Faith. And the devil, not, the third thing you need to know, the devil is after your faith. He told Peter, he said, uh, P Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I pray that your faith fail not. See, he was after Peter's faith. I pray that your faith fail not. And when you, wait a minute, this was prophetic. Of what, it was a word of knowledge of what was getting ready to happen. I pray that your faith fail not. Remember he, remember he denied Jesus three times? I don't know the man. He even actually began to swear. We call it today cuss, and I don't know the so-and-so man. I don't know him. Well, how many know his faith almost failed? His faith in Jesus. We didn't hear anything after Peter denied Jesus. We did not hear anything about Peter until after the resurrection. When they went in there and they said, you see Christ. You see Jesus of Nazareth. He is no longer here. He's risen as he said. And the angels told the women, go tell his disciples and Peter that I'll meet them in Galilee. Do you know what that did to Peter's faith? It was revived again. I can't hear y'all. And P uh, hey, Peter, oh, come on. Peter got his fight back. Say he got his fight back. One word from God can change your life. That changed his life. He got his fight back. And when, remember what Peter said? He said, hey, how did he get his fight back? Jesus had already made intercession for him. He said, I prayed that your faith not fail you. He had a setback, but his comeback was greater. Say, I may have had some setbacks. Say, my comeback is going to be greater. Say, God is not finishing writing my story. God can rewrite your story. A lot of times, you know, you're closer than you really think. And what people do, they give up, they cave in and quit. You know what? You're not just fighting for yourself. Pastor Dave and I are just not fighting for ourselves. We're fighting for those people that need our ministry. Because God said there are only certain people that you can reach that nobody else can reach. He said it will mean heaven or hell for somebody, and I will hold you responsible. At that time, I didn't want to preach no gospel. If you don't preach the gospel. What, what's that story, Pastor Dave, about the, the, star, the, the starfish? The... That's right. Starfish, yeah, that's right. You can help just one person. You know what I'm saying? Amen. I mean, no, but we're going to help more than this because God told me. Every one of them counts, right. A lot of starfish washed ashore. And um, a guy said, come on, let's throw them back in the ocean. Another guy go, oh, there's so many of them. See, he's going to quit. There's so many of them, so he's going to quit. So the other guy just picked one up, tossed it back in the ocean, and he said, well, I mean, it's a lot of them here. He said, well, I made a difference in that one, that, that starfish life. Amen? You can make the difference in your neighbor's life or somebody. You've been called to preach to somebody. May not have a public ministry, but you have a ministry. So the devil is after your faith. See, without faith, now listen to this, without faith you can't please God, which means you can't receive from God. I said without faith you can't please God, which means you cannot receive from God, and the devil knows that. 
The devil wants you to give up on church. I'm preaching good now. You know what this coronavirus is from the pits of hell. And they're trying to get another virus going. And we bind that in Jesus' name. Number one, it was manufactured, just so you know. The devil wants you to give up on church. You say, well, I've been faithful and nothing has happened. Look at your neighbor say, yet. You know, I'm going with the word. Proverbs 28, 20 says, a faithful man shall abound in blessings. You keep doing what God told you to do. And there's light at the end of the tunnel. There is reward. There is victory at the end of the tunnel. If you do what God told you to do. See, most people, they break down before they break through. Yeah. Pastor Day said, a faithful man is a person who is expecting something that they can't see. If you already have it, it wouldn't be faith because you already got it, right? A faithful man, somebody who's in lack that's expecting. I would say I preach alone, but when he preached with me, it's always good, so I can't say that. You know, Hebrews 10.25 says, not forsaking yourselves to assemble together. You know what? God don't want you physically, just physically here. He wants you here mentally too. And on the other hand, maybe you got to fake it till you make it. Just obey God. I can't hear you. But it's so much easier if you put your whole self into it. Amen. Forsake not ourselves to assemble together as a manner of some, but encourage one another. You should be encouraging somebody to come to church. You should be working on somebody to come to church. Now, you know, a sheep produce sheep. I'm the shepherd. Right? We know he's the great shepherd, but I'm the un under shepherd. Sheep produce sheep. You should always be witnessing somebody trying to get them to come to church. It's too many people that are not in church than the people that are in church. This coronavirus, the devil used that to separate people from God. But encourage one another. See, there's strength in numbers. The Bible says two are better than one, for they have a better report for their labor. For if one brother falls... The other one can lift him up. But woe to him who is alone, who has not another to lift him up when he falls. You should always be in witnessing. The, well, wait a minute. How many wise folks we have in the house? The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. And Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, it says you're going to shine like the stars in heaven. Those that lead many to righteousness. You know, we were at the uh, Grill to Glory Pastors Conference today. And right toward the end, the man of God of that house had an unction to give an altar call. And he did. And one lady, one person, one little starfish came forward and gave her heart to Jesus. And that place came unglued. Now, you know what? Everything happened was wonderful, but that's the greatest miracle. When you pass from death to life. Amen. It was powerful, y'all. We had church today. It was wonderful. You know, um, there's strength in numbers. Um, sheep travel in groups. When one strays away from the pack, they become vulnerable to predators. I don't think it's a coincidence that the Bible calls us sheep. The Bible calls you sheep. Say sheep. Don't stray away from the pack because you become vulnerable. The, the devil is a liar. Did you hear me? Um, I just prophesied to somebody. And, you know, they were a little upset. They go, oh, I'm moving a pretty good distance in my last service. I said, mm-mm. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen? 
Psalms 92 says this, those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. The rewards of obedience is found in verse 14 of Psalms 19. I mean, Psalms 92. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to say that the Lord is upright and there is no unrighteousness in him. The devil wants you to give up on church. Now, that's one thing. All my, I, got that, I got that one right. If I didn't know nothing else, all I know is church made me feel better. It made me act better. Come on, y'all. Amen. You know, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost had fully come. And they were all gathered together in one mind, one accord. Then suddenly, the devil wants you to stray away from the pack so you can miss your suddenly. Say, I'm not going to do it. Number two, in other words, you got to fight to come to church. Sometimes you got to fight, especially when the devil's pulling on you. Ain't nothing going on. Ain't nothing happening, you know. You're not changing. How many know he's a liar? Sure he is. Um, well, you can't get an agreement with him. Wow. Mm, 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 mm. The Bible. The devil wants you to give up on the word of God. Well, I confessed that scripture three times. Well, you gave up too soon. Maybe the fourth time would have brought it on through. Who knows? Amen. Amen. The Bible says, and it came to pass. I'm in Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And it came to pass that Jesus came to Nazareth where he had brought up. Now, he, he is in ministry now. So he came to Nazareth where he was brought up. Listen at this. As his custom was, he went to the synagogue. As his custom was, he went to church. Jesus. They call it the synagogue in the day. They call it the temple. We call it the church. Same thing. Jesus went to church out as his custom, as his habit was. On the Sabbath day, he stood up to read. And this was delivered unto him, the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it said, verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me, say I'm anointed, to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me, say I have a calling. You do. To heal the broken and hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it to the minister, and he sat down. What just happened? He found himself in the word. See, the devil wants you to give up on the word because he don't want you to know the truth. Because if you know the truth, you're going to be set free. He found himself in the scriptures. He found his calling. He said, wait a minute, I'm called to preach. And I'm anointed to do it. See, where there is a call, there is an anointing. My calling is in the area of healing. My calling is in the area of deliverance. I'm called to lay hands on the sick and they recover. I'm called to cast out demons. That was his ministry during his generation. The devil don't want you to find yourself in the word. You know what? That's how I found out I was called to teach. Now, when I was 16, I heard God's voice. I was running outside, and all of a sudden, I stopped. I didn't hear nothing. I just stopped dead in my tracks, and I just froze like this. I, like, I, like I knew God was going to say something, but I didn't know it, I guess. And the Holy Spirit said, um, God said by the Holy Ghost, he said, I want you to preach for me. And I looked up in my thoughts. I said, preach what? I was talking to God. Preach what? Never said a word till I was 20. I say, now, what area of ministry am I in? Because I heard about the five-fold ministry. And I kept, he, I kept flipping to, and Jesus taught by the seashore. I kept flipping to different, all in the gospel, and I kept the word teach and in, in the book of James, and be not many teachers, knowing you receive the grace. And I kept, and the Holy Spirit said, that's what you're called to do. You're a teacher. 
I heard accurately, I can tell you that. Amen. Amen. So don't let the devil, don't give up on the Bible because the Bible is true. If God said it, you settle that. And it will come to pass. Say amen. Oh, yeah, right. Listen at this. You know, I know this is the devil. The devil wants you to give up on giving. Now, how are you going to preach that tithing don't work? It sure worked for you. Now, didn't it? I can't hear you. The devil wants you to give up on giving. Well, I've been giving. And I'm, I, know, I know this person is right. I've been giving and giving and nothing has happened. Look at your neighbor say, yet. Uh, God, you know what? The devil wants to put you under a curse. Now, I'm going to tell you about me. When I get my paycheck, first, first check I'm right. I'm tithing and I'm giving an offering. I'm not going to pay all my bills, didn't tithe. See, the Bible says the tithe is holy. And it's the first fruits, not the last fruit. God don't want your leftovers. You know what God told me? He said, I was 20 years old. And when nobody teaching tithing like that, God taught me how to tithe. And then the ministry that I was in for 20 years um, was 17 years before my pastor went home to be with the Lord. Ooh, ooh. He, I mean, got coupled with that, got with, with the Holy Ghost in him, taught me how to tithe. Because, I mean, he was a teacher too, teacher, preacher. He could do both. And um, I was at the uh, uh, Shell service station in East St. Louis, and the Holy Ghost said, I heard it so clear, folks, like somebody was standing right next to me, but it wasn't on the outside end. It was inside. It was clear. I just heard God's voice. He said, don't mix my money with your money. I had cashed my check, and I hadn't separated the tithe. And what, where I went to church with, it was a charismatic check, but they, they didn't really get into all that. He had a miracle ministry. He would, he would take an offering, but he, wasn't, he didn't really get into that. And um, Holy Spirit said, and I cashed my check pumping gas at a shell station on, off of 50th and State Street in East St. Louis. Actually, I was in Washington Point. They called it Washington Point. And uh, the Holy Spirit said, don't mix my money with your money. You come too late to tell me that tithing is under the old covenant and is not for the new covenant. You, you, wait a minute. The Holy Spirit ain't going to listen to you. And from that day forward, I, I'm, I'm almost 62 years old. So I can tell you almost 42 years I've tied, didn't miss a beat, but one time in 42 years when I was 22 years old and my cousin talked me into not tithing. Well, we got we need extra money to pay the utility bills. And I say, well, where is that scripture and I'm supposed to take my tithe and do it? Oh, she got on my nerves. I did it just to shut her up. And I had 30 pearl shoes, and the devil destroyed all, almost all of them with these dogs and cats. I had some Cinderella shoes in a, in a closet. Demonic. Tell me, how can a cat, a cat cannot leap that high up in that closet? Wait a minute. With a door shut. The devil opened the door. Probably He probably threw all this stuff out and gave it to those dogs and cats. They destroyed my shoes. Well, anyway, it was enough to scare me. I, I never did that again. Praise the Lord. Say amen. I'm going to give God what's right and not what's left over. God told me it becomes holy when you separate it. That's when it becomes holy. Because in Leviticus 27.30, he said the tithe is holy and it belongs to who? The Lord. And then God said, I'll rebuke the devourer. I'm just going to tell you, it's, it, it's, just not re, it's just not in reference to your finances. He'll rebuke the devil from trying to devour your health. I don't know why people play with this tithe money. You say, you're trying to get my money. Well, I'm going to tell you what my pastor said. Just don't give it. There you go. That's up to you. I, I don't carry the care of that. You know what I mean? I live by my giving. Right, and I receive from God. No, it's the first fruits. The first check that I write. If I showed you my check register, that's what you would see. God said, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. What does that mean? He's talking about in his house. Why? Because the Bible says, um, go in all the world, preach the gospel, right? 
And then in Romans it said, how can they hear without a preacher? How can I preach unless I'm sent? Takes money for me to keep the doors open here. And I thank God, y'all are faithful. You all are faithful. I appreciate it. When for you, I, the doors will be shut. So you have a reward coming to you for helping us preach the gospel. Amen. And then God said, I open the windows of heaven. Tithing opens the windows of heaven. And then God said, I'll pour out of the windows. He told Israel, he said, you rob me in tithes and offerings. So the tithing opened the windows of heaven. And the offering determines what comes out because the tithe belongs to God. He said the tithe belongs to me is holy. It is mine. What y'all going to do with that scripture, right? And what belongs to you? Now, the offering, the Bible says, and I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it said, as a man purpose in his heart, so let him give. Now, you can't purpose the tithe. God purposed that the tithe would be 10%. But you can't purpose how much you're going to give in your offering. That's between you and the Lord. But let me give you a hint. A scant measure is abomination to God. Say amen. So, see, the devil, don't, don't let the devil trick you and put you under a curse. See, you know what? If anything go wrong with me, I got confidence. You know why? Because I'm not a thief. And I can boldly come to the throne of grace. Devil, I buy a lot. Many times I say I'm a tither, I'm a giver. And God said he will rebuke the devourer. I'm helping him. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You have no right, no authority to attack my body, attack my finances, attack my mind, my children, my husband. Amen. Yep. Oh, wow. The devil wants you to give up on serving in the church. You say, well, how long are you going to do the grill to glory? Until it's too cold where I cannot bear it. It's the only thing I can tell you. I can't hear you. Is it worth a lost soul? Is, I mean, some people don't want God to inconvenience them inconvenience me. I'm a preacher of the gospel. My mission is to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Jesus said the, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. I can't hear you. Now I know the time is going to come where ain't no telling how, much, how many inches of snow we're going to have and, and I can't do it. You understand? But I'm going to do it while I can do it. Jesus said, I'm going to work while it's still daytime. He said, because the night is coming and no man works in the dark. I'm going to work now before the night, the bad weather comes. How many is with me? The devil wants you to stop serving in the church. You got to fight to do what God calls you. You know what? The members are supposed to do the work of the ministry. I know it's scripture, y'all. Say amen. But you got to remember, before I became a pastor, I was a member. I worked for my pastor for about 14 months. Then I got another job. And then I just want you to know, for a consecutive five years, I still cleaned uh, his office and did little things for him. Did y'all hear me? I did communion. I mean, oh, yeah. Got to do what you got to do. Say amen. You reap what you sow, don't you? Um, you heard me tell this account before. Um, I, uh, You know, the Bible says, whatever your task may be, work at it heartily from the soul as something done for the Lord and not for men, knowing with all certainty that it is of the Lord and not from men that you shall receive the inheritance, which is your real reward for the, the one whom you're actually serving is Christ. How many know God will prepare you for something bigger? Yeah. I mean, so don't despise whatever you do. Uh, whatever you do in a church, you know, God will reward you. The Bible says if you give a prophet, any ministry gift, just a glass of cold water. Jesus said you will not lose your reward. You mean a, a cup of water? I'm telling you a, a cup or a glass of water. Amen. 
The devil wants you to give up on life. How many know you're going to have to fight to live? Say, I'll live and not die. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7, 17 says this. Do not be overly wicked and do not be a fool. Why should you die before your time? Now, you know, the Bible says we all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of the things that we've done in this life. Now, and the callings of God are irrevocable. In other words, uh, the King James says without, without repentance. Once God called you to do something, I don't care what it is. Uh, God, and he, he's not going to change his mind. Now, whether you fulfill it or not, you're going to be judged based on that calling. What you did or what you did not do. So it would be foolish, Solomon said, to die before your time. Now, I know the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, then after that, the judgment. Don't go. Don't go until it's time for you to go. Say amen. Paul said, I finished my course. I finished my race. I kept the faith. By the way, there's nobody in your race but you. It'd be dumb to lose it. It'd be dumb to quit. Don't die until God is done with you. Say amen. The devil wants you to doubt heaven, give up on heaven. Why, you know what? It's a lot of people that's been born again. They gave up on heaven. How many know it's a trick of the devil? Jesus, if Jesus said it, I'm going to go with Jesus. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I wouldn't have told you. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. Come on. Somebody know the word that where I am, there you shall be also. Now, I believe that. You remember after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to 10 of his disciples. Thomas, Judas had already fallen. Thomas was not there. So 10 disciples. And so when Thomas came in, they said, we've seen the Lord. He said, I won't believe it unless I see it. He was from Missouri, the show me state too. He said, I won't believe it unless I see it. Now look here. And when Jesus, two or three days later, Jesus walked through the door. He didn't open it. He walked a wall through a door. He said, Thomas, come here. He said, reach forth your hand and touch the print of the nails and thrust your hand in my side and be not faithless but believing. Thomas said my Lord and my God and Jesus rebuked him he said Thomas now you believe because you've seen but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. I have not I haven't seen heaven but I believe heaven exists. I believe it by faith. How about you? Don't give up on heaven. Say amen. Say that's my future home. The devil wants you to give up on salvation. You got to fight for your salvation. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. and Behold, all things have become new. Your spirit is now alive. The Bible says that you were dead in your trespasses and sins. But now when you accepted Christ, your spirit was made alive unto God. Now, you know, unfortunately, when we got saved, our flesh didn't get saved. Can't you tell? It will want to do everything it did. Before we became born again, you say, oh, I know this flesh is something else. But Paul said, you got to crucify it. You got to kill it. You got to mortify it. You got to bring it up under subjection and make your flesh submit to your spirit instead of your spirit submitting to your flesh. Paul said, I die daily. John the Baptist said, I must decrease so that he can increase. You are born again. Amen. But God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That's you. Say, I'm born again. Now, you know what? When I first got saved, I always doubted my salvation. I always thought I committed the unpardonable sin. And it dawned on me one day, I don't even know what that is, so how can I commit it? Isn't that something? 
And, you know, I used that same thing on somebody else. Years and years went by, and this girl kept going. I, I'm, I'm just so afraid I committed the unpardonable sin. I forgot about my experience. I said, but you haven't committed the unpardonable sin. And I tried to tell her what it was. And I was coming out of the prayer room. Never forget it. Holy Spirit said, go to so-and-so, so-and-so, and ask her if she knows what the unpardonable sin is, even though I kept telling her she wasn't getting it. And I said, what is the unpardonable sin? She said, I don't know. I said, well, how do you know you committed it then? She went, oh, instantly set free. The devil wants you to give up on Christianity. You know, give up on Jesus. Now, you know, personally, uh, I don't believe a born-again Christian should study other religions. What for? To get confused? Uh, Allah is dead. Buddha is dead. Mohammed is dead. Only Jesus is alive. Period. Say amen. Don't give up on Christianity. Say amen. The Bible says let us hold fast to the confession of our faith without wavering. You know, but the Bible says there is neither salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven, that means on this earth, given among men by which we must be saved. All of those folks I just named, Allah, Buddha, Muhammad, I got by Confucius, they're all dead. Remember Paul said to the church of Ephesus, he said, I came by and I saw a statue that said the unknown God. He said, that unknown God don't even talk. Why would you bow to that? I want a God I can feel. I can feel, I can feel God through the Holy Ghost. I want a God that's going to talk back to me. Yeah, God talks to me. Now, if you, now if you tell a psychiatrist that, they're going to go, hmm, they're going to be twirling that, thing, that uh, pencil. Like, oh, he does. He talks to you. What does he say? <laughs> Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. And I'm the light. And no man comes to the Father but through me. I'm the door in the sheepfold. No one enters. If anybody comes up another way, he's a thief and a robber. I am the door. I am the way. I am the only access to the Father. Woo! Glory. I'm preaching myself happy. If you're going to win... You're going to have to make a decision to win. I can't hear you. Victory begins with a decision. If you don't begin, you can't win. You have to fight to overcome. Say, I'm a fighter. You don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to be great got to start where you're at. Amen. The Bible says, whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. You got it. God wants you to be a victor and not a victim. He wants you to live a victorious life and not a defeated life. He wants you to walk on your problems instead of letting your problems walk all over on you. He does not want you to roll over and play dead. I know I keep saying that a lot of Christians have rolled over and played dead. In other words, you just let the devil just stomp all over you. It's time to get up and fight like a mighty man of valor. Fight like a woman of valor. Say amen. So what happens if you decide not to fight? Well, you won't win the battle that you're in. Well, it's going to seem harder to win the next one. I can't hear you. Yeah. Winning prepares you for the next battle. Why? See, number one, you gain a position. David, I killed the bear. I killed the lion. Goliath looks small to him, y'all. Goliath was about 13 feet tall. And he probably weighed about over 300 pounds. I can't remember. 
They said his armor weighed two, 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 over 200 pounds, 300 pounds. He was a big dude. David said this uncircumcised Philistine is going to be just like that bear in the line. He told Goliath, Goliath says, come to me. Oh, that's not deep enough. Wait a minute. Come to me. And uh, he go, now what is this? You send this little ruddy kid out to fight me? And David just said, you know what I'm going to do? He said, I'm going to cut your head off. And the birds of the air are going to eat your carcass. Da little David, little ruddy David, red hair and probably red, red rosy cheeks. He, uh, he, uh, Goliath's talking smack. David say, and I'm going to talk smack too. And how many know that he, and David got his little sling, five smooth stones, put it in his sling, and he only needed one. How many know God put some wind, some sail behind that? Can you feel that? Behind that one stone. Yeah. And the Bible said it sunk in his forehead. Now, if somebody's going to hit you in the forehead, now typically you fall backwards, right? Mm-mm. He fell forward. Face down. Why? So Israel don't have to see that ugly face no more. Your giant is going to fall face down. So you don't have to look at it anymore. Winning prepares you for the next battle. You gain a position. What position is it? A higher level of faith. It gives you faith for the next battle. Say, winning gives me faith for the next battle. Now, you know what? Oh, I went through all that. I didn't flip back. When you're fighting, how many know you got to know your opponent? The Bible says you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, right? It's not a natural fight, but it's a spiritual fight. Amen? See, you'll win the battle once you realize that. Get your eyes off of whoever's cutting up. And I always look at a demon. Somebody go to cutting up? I'm like... I, you know, that's why, folks, that's the secret to my love walk. You know why? I ask God, give me a revelation that I'm not fighting flesh and blood. This older saint taught me that. She said, I would say stuff, and I, I guess she could feel the animosity. I was about 25 then. She said, you need to ask God to give you a revelation that you're not wrestling with flesh and blood. She said, that is not them, that's him. And I ask God, I say, God, give me a revelation that I, my fight is not, not against human beings, flesh and blood, when people do things to me. Folks, I'm telling you, God gave me a revelation. I, you know, that's why I can easily forgive. People do, some, people do some weird stuff, some mean stuff. And I have to forgive. I'm like, okay, you've been used by a devil. I'm going to go ahead and bind that devil up, and I'm going to go ahead and love you. Say Amen. Paul says against evil, angelic powers, against principalities and powers. If you're going to win, you need to know your opponent. Amen. Say it's the devil. And once you recognize your opponent, stay persistent. Kenneth Hagin, son came to him one time. And um, Ken Jr. said, Dad, they wrote an article about you in the newspaper. He said, they're saying all kind of bad stuff about you. He said, well, praise the Lord. He said, that's all you got to say? He said, well, the devil is a persistent cuss. So you have to be persistent. Amen? Say, I'm going to fight a good fight. Say, I'm going to hold fast to the confession of my faith. Say, confession leads to possession. And the Bible says in Matthew eleven twelve, 12, it says, the violent take it by force. Say, by force. By force. So you're not taking it from God, but what you're doing, because he's giving you all things that pertain to life and God, is the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You, he may try to get a grip on your stuff, but you're going to make him loose that grip, because that's yours. Say, I'm taking it back. Everything. The devil stole from me. You got to fight for victory. You have to fight for your family. Joshua did. As for me and my house, we're serving the Lord. 
You got to fight for your kids, whether they're in your house, out of your house. You got to fight for your health. You got to fight for your joy. Yeah. Nehemiah told um, uh, the people of Judah, he said, God had already forgave you. He said, don't be sorry no more. He said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You got Jerry Savelle many years ago, back in the early 80s, I believe. He said, the devil can steal your joy. He can steal your goods. You got to fight for your, to be happy. You got to fight to stay positive. Oh, boy. Because, you know, when the devil bring on discouragement, how many know it's easy to get discouraged? You got to fight to stay positive. You got to fight to turn the TV off. I know I do with Cody. Lord have mercy. Say amen. Say, I'm going to fight to win. Say, I'm not going to change my confession. Say, I'm going to hold tightly without wavering. Say, once I hear from God, say, I'm not going to change. Say, I'm going to fight until my faith turns to sight. Say, I'm going to keep speaking what I believe. Are you? Amen. Say, I'll never give up. I want to read you part of this poem, and then I'll be through. I cut mo most of it out. God uh, had my first uh, spiritual daughter give me this years and years ago. I want to say it was in the early 90s. I was so discouraged. I'm going to read part of it. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint ma man or woman. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too late when the night came down, he lost how, how close he was to the golden crown. I just had a thought. Remember the children of Israel? They wept in their tents all night after they heard the evil report of the, of the, of the ten spies. The giants are in the land. We're not able. They're bigger and stronger than us. We are but grasshoppers in their sight. We are not able to overtake them. They had, they had millions of Jews. They ran to their tents, and they cried all night. And they don't, listen, what should have been an 11-day journey, out of their wilderness, they spend 40 years in the wilderness. It's up to you whether you're going to stay in the wilderness one day, 11 days, or 40 years. Often the struggler has given up. Say, I'm not going to give up. When he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too late when the night came down how close he was to the golden crown. They were so close. Can you imagine? Keep the switch of faith on. What would it be like? You kept the switch of faith on. God, I'm believing that this house is paid off. God, I'm believing that this church is paid in full. I'm believing all my cars are paid in full. 11 days away. But if we give up tonight, the next day, You'll never know how close you were. You know, my mom didn't say this. Mom, when is Christmas? It's right around the corner. Mm. God, when you're going to do it, it's right around the corner. You know, God, I got some big corners. But you know, sometimes you've been fighting, and you may be 11 days around, close to the corner. Success is failure turned inside out. So in other words, you fail the first time. Success is around the corner. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tent in the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It might be near when it seems so far. I can't hear you. Don't give up on your healing. By stripes I'm healed. So stick to the fight when you're hit the hardest. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. Say, I never quit. Stand with me. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, 
subscribe, and comment. God bless you. We'll see you next time.